So, we're about to uh, semen test the ram. Uh, the purpose of that is to see if he's going to be fertile or not. Uh, the rams are going to be mixed with a number of ewes, so we want to make sure that he's fertile and all the ewes will end up being in lamb. Yes, since you brought them in. I'm sorry, I can't help you too much. Good. Perfect. Top man. Right. I need to make sure I don't sample you. <laughs> no? Yes. We got some. Shall we put him in? Tiny amount, tiny little amount. So let's have a look. So what we're going to do next is we're going to use this measuring device. We need to put in here, in this little receptacle. This is the AccuRead. It's the, it measures um, sperm cell concentration in cattle, in sheep, in pigs, in um, poultry, in horses, goats, pretty much everything. First of all, I put the normal saline. Then we'll uh, zero it to make sure that we don't get any false readings. The next step would be to take a small amount of um, the sample. This procedure is very important, particularly if we're AIing um, sheep or if we're doing embryo transfer. Uh, also, increasingly, we've started using it for normal uh, semen tests for cattle and for sheep. So this uh, pipette here, the uh, automatic pipette, is set to r take 10 microliters. So we are going to put that in and in a second we'll measure it. But before that we need to shake the sample in a specific way. As you can see, the sperm is floating in it. It's now nicely diluted. We diluted it three times. There's a little arrow that needs to point at the front. And whatever I do, I cannot touch it from the side because this is where the reader is taking its measurements. So, big moment now. Press measure and see what comes up. Well, that's not bad. Not bad for a young one. In here, we've got 80.9 million sperm cells per mil. Um, for older animals, and uh, when, especially when we do AI, we prefer that concentration to be in the billions. But that's a very good start for a ram that is going to be used for natural service um, in, in, in a flock. So we make um, a note of all that here. 80.9 in the sixth. Good. Now we're going to examine the sample under the microscope. So very gently we place the sample. Nice sample. There's a fairly good wave. What we're looking at is the way it moves. I would give it out of five, I would give it 2.8, at best a three. Um, again, I would be happy to use this for natural service. Um, he's a young ram, maybe later on he will improve even further. The better the wave, um, the, the better the success rate. Um, so if we get uh, a sample that's five out of five, so everything is moving quickly and mixing pretty much as you're watching um, Guinness being poured in your glass and it all mixes and flows and um, it's this nice strong uh, flow into that um, these are some of the best samples um, so five, five out of five would be ideal uh, in his case being a younger ram um, we need to bear that in mind so good start um, we are going now to examine the sperm cells more closely 
So what we're going to do next is we put a slide cover. Now with a slide cover the movement of the sperm is more restricted and as you can see you can no longer see a wave but you can see the sperm cells moving. All these black bigger spots are impurities, dust, uh, urine crystals that they mix with a sample. In, in natural service they would also mix uh, with it. So we're going higher magnification from four times we're up to ten now. Let's try to find the sample. There you go. And uh, I can see quite a lot of uh, sperm cells obviously. Um, I'm constantly zooming in and out. Let's zoom it back in. It's zooming back in. So the question we need to answer from now on is how much of that is viable and also how much of that has got um, uh, abnormalities, uh, problems, uh, morphological, the shape, is it the right shape, is it normal? Um, so we're going to take a further look on a higher magnification. We're going up to 40 times. Aha, this is now beginning to come into focus. Nice. Sampling and testing ram semen is there's always a lot more sperm cells per mil compared to sampling a bull. Um, the technique we use is electroejaculation. You'll never get anywhere near the amount that the normal, uh, the natural service would give you. Um, but comparing the bull sample to the ram sample, the ram always gives a lot more because in a day a ram will work harder and will cover many, many more um, use than a bull would. So they need the volume. Uh, size does matter when it comes to semen examination. So on this magnification we can see um, a number of things. I don't see too many um, abnormal sperm. I don't see um, sperm with bent tails for instance. Um, I don't see sperm with no heads or uh, sperm with no mid pieces and no tails. Um, it looks fairly normal. I'd be more than happy to uh, utilize this for uh, my own flock. Uh, it's a nice, nice little ram and he's got a good future ahead of him. So, yes, all good. What we're now looking at is the previous ram's results having been left for an hour and uh, of course after an hour there's very little movement uh, but because there's less circulation we can see in detail any shape um, difficulties so it's easier to look at any morphological problems uh, with problems with the shape of the sperm so if we look at this here we've got a sperm cell there you can see the head, the mid piece, and then the tail is bent. There it is, the tail is bent. So you don't want too many of these. Ideally, they should all look like that, but with a lot more movement. So head, mid piece, and a nice tail. Nice tail. This obviously is on its verge of finishing, dying. There's another one that's dead. It's dead now because it's an hour after we uh, sampled it, collected it, but there's an awful lot that are still moving. But there aren't that many with problems of shape. Um, there's one or two. If the RAM gave us a sample that looked th like this from the get-go, we would say, hang on a minute, there's a problem here. Um, although they look, the shape looks, in most cases, it, the shape looks okay, the movement, the motility is, is um, terrible. Um, so that's how a poor sample would look, but obviously this particular one, it looks poor because it's been left out for an hour. It's been left out on a heated stage like most of our samples. It's very important from the point we collect and the point we store and examine everything to be at 36, 37 degrees. So heated stage here, uh, another heated stage there as a backup, and that um, is worth every penny um, of um, 
uh, of, of, of its cost because it allows us to keep the sample warm without um, immersing it into water. Water and sperm, if they mix, uh, it's not very good for the sperm. The sperm will die. Um, so if we were to use a wet bath, we need to make sure we use normal saline in it. That uh, mixes better with the sperm if they accidentally mix. Two different methods to collect a semen sample from a ram. We have the electrojaculator and the other hand would hold the, um, the semen glass, as we call it. The semen glass, the inside of that glass, will attach to the prepuce, to the skin around the um, tummy, the abdomen, that the penis comes out through when the ram is erect. And that's the purpose of this glass is to collect any uh, semen sample. On the other hand, we've got, for those rams that are happy to um, produce a semen sample while we are present, you get better results in terms of volume and also in terms of a quality of the sample if you were to use an artificial vagina or an AV as it's called. So an artificial vagina has got two parts. It's got the hard shell on the outside that's really rigid and on the inside it's got a lining, a rubber lining. In between the hard shell and the lining we filled it up with water, hot water as it boils straight off the kettle. Um, and then we uh, blow a, a bit of air through this inlet to fill up any gaps. We get better results um, with this, particularly for artificial insemination and embryo transfer. We can get volumes, anything from uh, 2, 5, 10 mils quite easily. So the b bigger the volume, the more animals we can then inseminate. Hello. Perfect. This is a nice Texel. We'll shake the cuvette without touching the sides, very gently pull it out. We've got exactly four uh, milliliters of water. It's normal saline, not any water, of liquid and um, the semen sample. It's nicely mixed, not touching the sides, goes back in and right, this is a nice result, nicer. This is 1.65 billion. Billion. Good. It would be great for AI, the best RAMs would probably be at the range of 4.6, uh, 5 billion, as high as possible. Um, in this case, the RAM hasn't been used for a couple of months at least, or even longer. So as he comes back into action, the more he works, the numbers also will start going up. So we'll test him again closer to the time. This is a very good start. If we compare this RAM, who's older obviously, and slightly more experienced, we can see a stronger wave. So I would give this a three and a half, getting close to four perhaps. Um, so that's, that's, that's a, in my opinion, that's a three and a half. Um, so there's a lot more swirling and that's, that's created by the sperm. Um, it's more vigorous, it's stronger, it's moving around quicker uh, and it's looking for that egg constantly when it's in the uterus. So that's the sort of movement you want or more. This is now times 10 magnification. And if we compare this, the speed it moves uh, compared to the previous one, um, you can see the difference. Y you can't just distinguish the sperm cells. They move so fast um, away from us. Uh, you can't sort of spot it straight away. We might be able to spot the old one at this stage, how fast they move once we go into higher magnification. That's the 40 times. Here we go. Right, you can just about make the shape of sperm cells, especially the ones that are underneath, they're moving slower. But most of them, they're just um, blink and you miss them. If we wait another half an hour to an hour, they'll, they would have slowed down much more. 
and we'll be able to tell uh, the difference. Um, if we now wanted to examine closer morphologically um, the sperm in terms of shape, we would need to dye it, dye as in with a colour, mix it with a colour and then fix it, so heat it up, so all the sperm cells die and they die um, as they were. So if they were normal, they would look normal into that after that process. Um, or if they had bent tails or bent mid pieces and all that, they would still look like that after the colouring. Uh, that's something we could do later. I mean, I would be happy to recommend this RAM um, for uh, natural service. If we give him some further rest and test him again, um, I'm sure the numbers um, it will be even better than the billions that they were, but also I'd like to see a better wave when it comes to artificial insemination and flushing and embryo transfer. So, good news.